So now I want to talk about a very important class of topological spaces, which are known as metric spaces. So we'll see that metric spaces are going to be actually the most useful topological space as we move on to consider manifolds. And we'll in fact see that all manifolds are actually metric spaces. So what do we mean by a metric space? Well, a metric space is a topological space, which is a set with uh, some particular topology that we've defined on that set, which we saw in the last video is just a collection of subsets of the set that satisfies the three axioms that we defined. So then additionally, as well as the topological space, we have to define what we mean by the metric, which I'm going to call G. So the metric, G, is what we call a symmetric bilinear form, which is just simply, if you like, a function of two arguments. Now, if we take two points in our set, M, I'll call them uh, X and Y, just for argument's sake, we can plug those two points into the metric and this is just going to give us some number, some real number. And now the interpretation that this metric has is that it effectively represents the distance between these two points. So I'll just quickly write down that this metric has to satisfy two properties. The metric has to be symmetric, which essentially means the distance between x and y is the same as the distance between y and x. And secondly, it has to be so-called positive definite. If we have two points, x and y, this must always be greater than zero. The distance between them is positive. However, this can be equal to zero if and only if x and y are the same point. So any function which we can define on our topological space that satisfies these properties, we can interpret it as giving a metric to the space. And we interpret that as defining the distance between the two points. So the easiest example we can uh, consider would be to just take our topological space to be in real numbers with the standard topology, which I mentioned in the last video. We'll actually come back to that in this video, but for now it's just going to be implicit. And we've defined some metric on this space. So how do we define a metric for this space? Well, first of all, what is the topological space? It's just a real line. We can consider points on the line and we define the metric as simply g of x and y is just the absolute value of their difference. So intuitively it's this distance along here if you like. So I mentioned this is the real numbers with the standard topology. We can give a reinterpretation of the standard topology using a metric space and using a metric. So if we remember how we constructed the standard topology, we first need to say, what is an open ball? Well, we can easily define an open ball now using our metric. So if we define the ball of radius r around some point x, and now for generality's sake, I'll say that we have a potentially d-dimensional real space. So the ball around the point is defined to be the set of all those points y which satisfy the distance between the points that we're considering given by the metric is less than our radius. So yeah, if we consider x to be the point we're constructing the ball around, the ball of, say, radius r is going to be the set of all points that lie in the open interval of radius r. Similarly, if we had two-dimensional real space, the ball 
of radius r is all of the points that lie within this region defined by the radius r, which is simply given by the metric, effectively the distance between, as we've taken the origin to be our point x, the distance between any point in this circle given by our metric has to be less than the radius to be in the ball. So that's intuitive and simple. We know how to think about distances in real space, and this is just a convenient way to construct our open balls now using this metric distance which we've defined. So then, just as we had before, we can say that any open set or any set is in the topology if for every point in the set we can construct a ball of a radius, uh, a non-zero radius around that point. So I won't bother writing it down, we did it in the last video. Um, I will just write it down. If the ball of some radius greater than zero around the point lies entirely within the open set. So this is standard topology. Now for our metric space. So now you'll sometimes see these open sets, which are part of the topology, referred to as neighbourhoods, or rather neighbourhoods of some particular point, in the sense that if we have some point that we've constructed an open set around, so this is our point, this open set defines a neighbourhood around that point, every point in the open set is said to be part of the neighbourhood of X. We're not going to bother with this terminology, we're just going to stick with calling the topology elements open sets. You can equally define a different, or the same notion of the topology using the neighbourhood definition. They're equal, but for our cases, we're going to find that open set definition more instructive. So now I just briefly want to introduce uh, what we would refer to as a topological invariant. A topological invariant is some topological property that you define which gives a classification to the topological space in that we can take two topological spaces, look at their invariants and then decide whether or not the two topological spaces are in a sense the same. So I have more to say, say about this. Uh, in future videos, but for now I just want to introduce one notion to you, the notion of a topological space being so-called Hausdorff, or sometimes called T2. So as we'll move forward to consider manifolds, all of the topological spaces which we're going to consider are going to be Hausdorff spaces, so it's useful to get to grips with this already. So what does a Hausdorff space mean? Well, essentially, if we just consider a topological space now, in order to be a Hausdorff space, if we have two distinct points in our topological space, I'll call them U and V, to be Hausdorff, we have to be able to construct around each point an open ball, or a neighbourhood if you like. So these are two open neighbourhoods, I'll call them big U and V. To be Hausdorff, the intersection of these open neighbourhoods has to be empty, or zero. What this effectively means is that if we now imagine bringing these two points closer and closer together, they could never touch because we could then not construct two open balls around each point. So if this is one size that I could have drawn this, I can now consider zooming in on these points. No matter how close they're going to get, I'm always going to have to be able to construct an open ball around each point. The points can never touch and um, one point can never lie on the boundary of an open neighbourhood of the other point. So 
So this, in effect, separates all the points of the topological space in that they have to be contained within their own kind of open set or open neighbourhood, if you like. So I'll just briefly mention Hausdorff being T2. There are other classes that we could have. We could consider T1 space, which states that if you consider a point, you construct the open neighbourhood around that point, the open set, you're now allowed to have the second point lie on the boundary of this uh, open, open set. So this would be a T1 space, turns out to be completely different properties entirely. We're just going to focus on T2, Hausdorff, where every point can be separated by these open walls.